Hello, son of God. This is your awakening. And today's video is about guiltlessness and invariability. And of course, uh, it's, uh, it's your truth because the son of God is guiltless. So let's dive deep into the teaching. Earlier I said that the Holy Spirit sets the goal of all good teachers whose ultimate aim is to make themselves unnecessary by teaching their pupils all they know. The Holy Spirit wants only this for sharing the Father's love for His Son. He seeks to remove all guilt from his mind that he may remember his father in peace. Peace and guilt are antithetical, and the father can be remembered only in peace. Love and guilt cannot coexist and to accept one is to deny the other. Guilt hides Christ from your side for it is the denial of the blamelessness of God's Son. Guilt hides Christ from your sight, for it is the denial for it is the denial of the blamelessness of God's Son. In this strange world that you made, the Son of God has sinned. How could you see them then? How could you see them? By making him invisible, by making him invisible, the hold of retribution rose in the black cloud of guilt that you have accepted. And you hold it very dear. For the blamelessness of Christ is the proof for the blamelessness of Christ is the proof that the ego never was and can never be. Without guilt, the ego has no life, and God's Son is without guilt. As you look upon yourself and judge what you do honestly, you may be tempted to wonder how you can be guiltless. Yet consider this. You are not guiltless in time, but in eternity. You have sinned in the past, but there is no past. Always has no direction. Time seems to go in one direction, but when you reach its end, it will roll up like a long carpet spread along the past, will roll up like a long carpet spread along the path behind you and will disappear forever. As long as you believe the Son of God is guilty, you will walk along this long carpet believing that it leads to death. And the journey will seem long and cruel and senseless, for so it is. As long as you believe the Son of God is guilty, you will walk along this carpet believing that it leads to death. And the journey will seem to be long and cruel and senseless, for so it is. The journey, the journey that the Son of God has set himself is useless, is useless indeed. But the journey on which his father sets him is one of release and joy. The father is not cruel and his son cannot hurt himself. The revelation that he fears and that he sees will never touch him. For although he believes in it, the Holy Spirit knows that it is not true. The Holy Spirit stands at the end of time, where you must be, because he is with you. He has 
already undone everything unworthy of the Son of God, for such was his mission given him by God. And what God gives has always been the Holy Spirit stands at the end of time where you must be because he is with you. He has already undone everything unworthy of the Son of God for such was his mission given him by God and what God has given has always been. You will see me you will see me as you learn the Son of God is guiltless. He has always sought his guiltlessness and he has found it. For everyone, for everyone is seeking to escape from the prison he has made and the way to find release is not denied him. Being in him, he has found it. When he finds it, it is only a matter of time and time is but an illusion. For the Son of God is guiltless now and the brightness of his purity shines untouched forever in God's mind. God's Son will always be as he was created. I'm not a body, I'm free from still as God created me. Deny your hold and judge him not, for his eternal guiltlessness is in the mind of his Father and protects him forever. When, when you have accepted the atonement for yourself, you will realize there is no guilt in God's Son. When you have accepted the atonement for yourself, you will realize there is no guilt in God's Son. And only as you look upon him as guiltless can you understand his oneness. For the idea of guilt brings a belief in condemnation of one by another, projecting separation in place of unity. You can condemn all yourself, and by so doing, you cannot know that you are God's son. You have denied the condition of his being, which is his perfect blamelessness. Out of love he was created, and in love he abides. Goodness and mercy have always followed him, for he has always extended the love of his Father. As you perceive the holy companions who travel with you, you will realize that there is no journey, but only an awakening. The Son of God, who sleepeth not, has kept faith with his Father for you. There is no road to travel on and no time to travel through, for God waits not for his Son in time, being forever unwilling to be without him. And so it has always been. Let the holiness of God's Son sign away the cloud of guilt that darkens your mind, and by accepting his purity as yours, Learn of him that it is yours. You are invulnerable because you are guiltless. You can hold on to the past only through guilt. For guilt establishes that you will be punished for what you have done. And thus depends on one dimensional time proceeding from past to future. No one who believes this can understand what always means. And therefore, guilt must deprive you of the appreciation of eternity. You are immortal, you are immortal because you are eternal and always must be now. Guilt then is a way of holding past and future in your mind ensuring the ego's continuity for if what it has been will be punished the ego's continuity is guaranteed yet the guarantee of your continuity is God's not the ego's 
and immortality is the opposite of time, for time passes away while immortality is constant. For time passes away while immortality is constant. So accepting the atonement of Christ for yourself teaches you what immortality is. For by accepting your guiltlessness, you learn that the past has never been and so the future is needless and will not be. So the future in time is always associated with expiation and only guilt could induce a sense of a need for expiation. Accepting the guiltlessness of the Son of God as yours is therefore God's way of reminding you of His Son and what He is in truth. For God has never condemned His Son and being guiltless, He is eternal. You cannot, you cannot dispel guilt by making it real and then atoning for it. This is the ego's plan, which it offers instead of dispelling it. The ego believes in atonement through attack, being fully committed to the insane notion that attack is salvation. And you who cherish guilt must also believe it, for how else but by identifying with the ego could you hold dear what you did not want, you did not want it. The ego teaches you, the ego teaches you to attack yourself because you are guilty. And this must increase the guilt, for guilt is the result of attack. The ego, the ego teaches you to attack yourself because you are guilty. And this must increase the guilt, for guilt is the result of attack. In the ego's teaching then, there is no escape from guilt. For attack makes guilt real, and if it is real, there is no way to overcome it. The Holy Spirit dispels it simply through the calm recognition that it has never been. As he looks upon the guiltless Son of God, he knows this is true. And being true for you, you cannot attack yourself, for without guilt, attack is impossible. And being true for you, you cannot attack yourself, for without guilt, attack is impossible. You then are saved because God's Son is guiltless, and being wholly pure, you are invariable.